bumps there. I don't know if you can see them over here. Those are called the colliculi. So there are four colliculus means a little hill. There are four little hills there. The superior, so two on the top and two on the bottom. The superior colliculi, the inferior colliculi. And then uh, below that is the cerebellum. And below the cerebellum, can you see that there is a spinal cord? And then the spinal cord connects to the brain. So now let's uh, turn over and look at the ventral surface. This is a human brain for comparison. So you can see it looks remarkably similar, just yes, um, the brain is a lot bigger. Right here. This is the side view here. So, um, on the side view here, this is the frontal lobe here, this is the parietal lobe, and the occipital lobe. And if you notice, there's no absolute separation of the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe from the, um, from the occipital lobe. These, uh, even in humans, it can be difficult to distinguish them. They don't have, they don't have obvious signs marking them. But the, the difference between the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe relates to a critical uh, brain function. That there's a line of separation between the motor control, which is mostly the frontal lobe, and the parietal lobe, which is control a lot of sensory uh, <coughs> processing. And then the occipital lobe that control our visual processing. And then the temporal lobe of the cheek is very small. So that's this part right here. The temporal lobe of the human is very big. This is very small, the temporal lobe here. So if you look at the brain surface, you can see some veins on the surface. The veins are mostly located in those creases between the ridges. So the ridges are called gyri. Okay, the singular is gyrus. So this is the, this one here we call the superior frontal gyrus here, the middle frontal gyrus, superior frontal gyrus. But the, but the creases in between are called the sulci. So that's plural for sulcus. So uh, we often use the terminology because when you do surgery, there are different things you expect to find in, in different parts of the brain there. Okay, so um, I'm going to turn over and have a look at the medical surface of the brain here. This is the ventral view of the human brain. And here's my ventral sheep brain. So uh, in the sheep brain, uh, one part of the brain that's much bigger than the human uh, is the olfactory, uh, olfactory ball. See this white thing here? Can all of you see it in your brain? Check, check what you see. So the olfactory bulbs control our sense of smell and our sense of taste. So if you, uh, if you get a brain injury and you damage olfactory lobes, you can't smell anything. Which uh, I had a patient. I had a patient that was studying at culinary school, and he had to quit because he damaged his olfactory lobes. He couldn't smell or taste them. <coughs> Um, in the mainland, people have gas appliances. They're supposed to switch to electric to reduce the sense of smell. Does anybody have any idea why the olfactory bulb of a sheep would be so much bigger than a human? What do they need to smell? Danger. So I think those are the two biggest things they need to smell. So a sheep can smell uh, a wolf you know, half a mile away. And a sheep eats food that's not very nutritious, so they have to eat a lot. So they have to be able to quickly figure out whether it's edible, whether it's going to poison itself or not. So they have to have really good sense of taste, better than we do. Another structure that's bigger in the sheep than in the human is the optic chiasm. And the optic chiasm is where the optic nerves coming from the retina connects to the brain. Why do you think the sheep would need to have better, bigger optic nerves than you? Let me ask them. Anybody else have any idea? Sorry. I would assume. 
assume it's for danger. They're going to need to see much more. And I think they need to ask that. So on this ventral surface, here we have the, uh, the spinal cord, the spinal cord, and this is the medulla. Uh, this is the pons. Brainstem is a common location for brain tumors in childhood. So I'll see probably on average six points a year I cause a brain tumor in brainstem. And then the midbrain is also a common location for benign tumors in childhood. The note below the midbrain, this above here, is the pituitary gland, which is a hormone producing gland that's partly neural, partly nerve tissue, partly hormonal tissue. And uh, that's much bigger in the sheep than it's in humans. I'm not exactly sure why it's so big in the sheep, but it might have some functions that are not the same. Okay, so we're going to cut this in half. So before we cut this, does anybody have any questions about the growth of the brain? If it's cut right down the midline, okay? But cutting it right down the midline is easier said than done. So um, I'm going to try to cut this one. And I'll try to cut it on here. So I'm going to cut it the bottom No, 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 not with the medulla. Then you have to extend the cut through the cerebellum. The cerebellum doesn't have any time to be cut. So now you're going to start these or the tree of life. And if you look at the cerebellum, you can see something interesting about it. The, the center part is more white, and the outer part is actually more gray. So if you stain the brain with the, the stains that the Renaissance anatomists produce, then that, that outer part looks gray. So they call that the gray matter. So gray matter refers to the area where a whole bunch of nerve cells are clustered together. The area where a lot of nerve axons no, are it's like pretty much axons are along yeah. fiber that connect one group of nerve cells to another group of nerve cells. So you're going to see, later you're going to see that the organization of gray matter and white matter in the cerebral hemisphere is completely different from uh, the cerebral hemisphere. Uh, are more uh, these are fibers that you use uh, in your brain when you do anything involves coordination, like bending over to pick something up off the floor without falling down, requires the cerebellum, um, playing a musical instrument, and doing uh, sports. Any of these coordinated movements involve the cerebellum. If yes. someone who's had a stroke in the cerebellum will have trouble with them. Um, even though it sounds very much so if you if you study neurology, there's like so many blood vessels you have to learn, and and not only is there a bunch of blood vessels, but there's variants.